Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, I am going to be going over the combos and strategies for Phantom Knights and some of the things that I picked up on as I climbed to Diamond 1 using this deck. So, first and foremost, uh, I do want to say that there are basically two ways to play this deck. You can either play a 40 card list or a close to 40 card list, or you can play a 60 card list. Uh, this deck works really well in just a kind of a pile because more or less, as long as you can get to Cherubini, you're able to get to basically the entire uh, line. So yeah, that really helps it out. And since there are a lot of really powerful level three monsters in the current format, things like the Red Roses, things like the Punks and etc., uh, it's very nice there. Um, but yeah, let's just move on to the card by card for the Phantom Knights. And since this is mostly going to be about the Phantom Knight stuff, I'm not going to be too much of an explanation on the Adventure nor DPE or any of the other cards like that. Uh, so yeah, let's just do the Phantom Knights. First of all, we have Ancient Cloak. Most of, or all of the Phantom Knights have a graveyard effect as well as an on-field effect or just like a general monster effect. Um, so yeah. Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak can banish its... Sorry. It has an on-field effect where if it's in attack position, can switch itself to defense position, target a dark monster, it gains 800 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's turn. However, that doesn't matter. Well, okay, it does occasionally, but rarely does it matter. The main effect, the beneficial effect, the effect that you most often want to use is the banish effect. You can banish it from the graveyard in order to add a Phantom Knight's card from your deck to your hand. Yes, that is a card, any card other than itself, which means you can also grab Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. This card can special summon itself once per turn from the hand as long as you control another Phantom Knight's monster. So this is a really good search target off of your cloak because of this. It's basically a free extender. Also, any of your Phantom Knights and this card allow you to grab a uh, basically your full combo because, again, it allows you to go into to Cherubini, which allows you to basically do a full combo, um, which we'll get into that in a second. You can also banish it to grab a Phantom Knight's spell or trap. Uh, next up, we have Ragged Gloves. This one gains, uh, or an XZ, a Dark XZ monster that is that uses this as material, gains a thousand attack and defense. That's its main effect. Um, however, it also has the banish effect to send a Phantom Knight's card from deck to grave. Now, this can get a lot of things into rotation. You can send a cloak to get the boots, or more likely what I use it for is to send a trap in order to use that trap as a reborn effect. Um, so all the traps of Fogblade and Wing, as well as I believe Sword, uh, all have the effect where they can banish themselves in order to, uh, reborn a Phantom Knight monster, but banish it during, or sorry, banish it when it leaves the field. Uh, this is very nice because if you put in, ex or sorry, if you use your monsters as XZ material, instead of being banished, they will be sent to the graveyard because now they are material and not necessarily monsters because Yu-Gi-Oh is weird. Anyway, so uh, this is very nice because it just gets you free material for an XZ summon. Uh, moving on, we have the Torn Scales. This is the last really good usable monster uh, that I used in the Phantom Knights deck that I built. Um, but yeah, this is basically the last one that most people play, at least at multiple copies. Uh, but this one is your best combo starter. Uh, if it's on the field, it's your best normal summon as well. Uh, you can discard a card in order to send a Phantom Knight's card from deck to grave. So basically, you can pitch two Phantom Knight's cards, depending on what you have in your hand, in order to get them into rotation. And since everything basically has a graveyard effect, this is very nice. Also, because this sends a card to the graveyard, you can also send another trap as well, much like Ragged Gloves. However, uh, unlike the other ones, you do not banish this card in order to gain an effect. What you do is, if... Uh, sorry. If a Phantom Knight's card in your graveyard is banished while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. So again, uh, if you go into an XZ monster, you can detach this as material, or if the XZ monster is just sent to grave, uh, it will go to the graveyard as well. Uh, so that's one way to play around that banishing effect. But um, this is also just another way to get another material onto the field. So, for example, if you were to activate the effect of a Silent Boots to grab a Spell or Trap, while this card is in your graveyard, it's going to bring itself back. Very nice. Moving on to the Spells and Traps, we have, well, I guess it's mostly just Traps, uh, but we have Phantom Knights of, or Phantom Knights Fogblade, 
Most people know this. It's basically just a uh, chain... I don't know, the one, the one chain card. Uh, Fiendish Chain. There we go. Fiendish Chain. It targets, negates a monster effect on the field of an effect monster. Also, it can't attack. But also, there is another thing that it does, which is better, I would say, than Fiendish Chain, where the monster that is targeted cannot be targeted for attacks. So if it is attached to something like a Rusty Bardish, your Rusty Bardish can no longer be targeted for attacks. And since it doesn't have to target an opponent's monster, you can target your own, protect yourself from battle. Very, very nice. Uh, I actually used this to win a duel against a Numeron network player to get into Diamond 1. So, there you go. Also, when it leaves the field, uh, when that monster leaves the field, destroy this card. The only thing that gets around this is, again, attaching to material as an XZ. So if your opponent uses that material as an XZ summon, this card's going to stick around. Other than that, it goes to the graveyard, and you can banish it from the graveyard to target a Phantom Knight's monster in your graveyard and special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. Uh, this, this sword and wing all have that last effect. So do keep that in mind. However, Shade Brigadine does not. But what this card does is very uniquely special and is very important. Uh, it's very good for finishing your combo because what it does is it's a, a free extender that can be searched off of boots as well as cloak. Um, so basically what Shade Brigadine does is you set it and then on that same turn, if you do not have a trap in your graveyard, you can special summon it. Uh, and it's just a Dark Warrior with 300 defense and is level 4. Mostly what I use this for is to go into Rusty Bardish since it requires two Dark Monsters. So with something like a Cherubini as well as a Rusty Bardish, you can get into rotation guaranteed a Shade Brigadine, which then can special summon itself and then you can go right into your Rusty. So that's very nice as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, moving on, we have Wings. I actually like playing this card over a third Fogblade. Reason being, it protects you from battle, similar to Fogblade, but without negating your own effect. Uh, so you can target a monster on the field, it gains 500 attack. Also, the first time that target would be destroyed by battle or card effect this turn, it is not destroyed. Yes, it does protect you from card effect. Uh, in all honesty, I didn't really see that come up as much as the battle destruction, uh, which is kind of interesting. So the battle effect is pretty nice to have. Plus, it's just another name that you can utilize in order to banish and uh, get more cards into rotation. So yeah, I, I just liked it a little bit more than having that second fog blade. Um, also, you can banish this card, target a Phantom Knight, yada yada. Pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that's basically all of the Phantom Knight cards that I actually used in my own build with the 40 card version. However, there are a few more Phantom Knight cards that are worth noting. Obviously, there are a ton that are just genuinely terrible, but let's talk about the ones that might actually see play. First of all, we have a the Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves. Now, if a Phantom Knight monster is special summoned to your field, you can special summon this card from your hand, then increase the level of uh, increase the level of this card by one. So basically it just becomes an instant level four, which can be nice if you're going into Rongo Nimiad. However, I don't play Rongo in my version and I honestly don't think it's the best way to play the deck just due to the fact that a lot of interaction is, sorry, because a lot of people are playing hand traps or more specifically just multiple forms of interaction, uh, it is harder to actually get into Rongo nowadays and... Rongo is just like easier to interrupt. That whole combo is easier to interrupt than the adventure stuff. Uh, so that's mostly it. Um, and it's just more inconsistent. Rongo is still crazy though. However, you can banish this in order to special summon a Phantom Knight from your hand, then increase its level by one. So again, it gets you another level four onto your field. Again, really good for Rongo Nimiad. Also, it can go into Dark Rebellion Xyz and the like. So, very nice, uh, good extender for rank 4 plays. Moving on, we have the Phantom Knights of Fragile Armor, a level 4, unlike all of the rest of the Phantom Knights, which are level 3. So this is the first one that is uniquely different. If a face of Phantom Knight you control would be des is destroyed by Battle or Card Effect, you could special summon this card from your hand. You could banish it in order to send a Phantom Knight's card from hand to Graveyard in order to draw a card. This one, again, 
I'm pretty sure you can tell why this one isn't nearly as useful. Yes, having a floating effect basically from your hand is pretty nice, but in all honesty, you don't really need that. You have a ton of recursion anyway, so there's no real point with that. However, the banish effect is where it is the most weak. Uh, yeah, being able to banish a uh, banish it in order to send another Phantom Knight card from hand is pretty nice. Uh, and drawing a card is always good. But the problem with this is you'd have to play a lot of Phantom Knights. Which, as you could tell, we're not actually doing. There's not a whole lot of Phantom Knights that we actually want to play. So, yes, this is good. This is way better in a more pure Phantom Knights build without things like Adventure or DPE. However, if you're not looking to play a more pure build, uh, this card can very easily be cut. And being a level 4 actually worsens its state uh, just due to the fact that you can't make Cheru with this card um, and Silent Boots. So, there you go. Cloven Helm has a similar issue with the fact that it is level 4, but if a Phantom Knight's card is sent to the graveyard, uh, this card gains 500 attack. That's it. It's a pretty mediocre on-field effect. On top of that, you can banish this card. Uh, during the end phase, add a Phantom Knight card from your graveyard to your hand. This one's okay, but again, because it activates in the end phase, and the game is not really balanced around multiple turns, I should say. Uh, this is okay to add like follow-up, but again, just due to that poor on-field effect and the fact that it's level four, it's not really worth playing. Maybe you play it at one, you send it off of something, uh, and then you can just banish it. Like for example, you send it off a Foolish Burial, you banish it to add back potentially a Fog Blade in the, in the end phase or a Torn Scales or something like that. Sure. Uh, but also sometimes you just won't have a target because you're banishing all your cards anyway for their effects. Um, sword is okay. Target it, yeah, um, Activate this by targeting a face of monster on the field. It gains 800 attack. Also, if that target would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you could destroy this card instead. Um, when it leaves the field, destroy the card. You can banish target special. Banish it when it leaves the field. It's okay. Uh, it's another battle trick, but unlike wings, it doesn't protect from... Um, it doesn't just, it sticks around, right? And with how many spells and traps you are playing, you don't want a card that just sticks around. Uh, whereas wings can just instantly be activated, send it to the graveyard, sure the attack boost isn't as good, but I mean, who cares, you know? Um, both kind of accomplish the same thing though. So yeah, this one and wing are technically interchangeable. Um, <clears throat> moving on, we have Phantom Knight's rank up a magic force. During the main phase, Banish one or more dark monster from your graveyard, then target a dark XZ monster. You control special summon a Phantom Knight, Raid Raptor, or XZ Dragon. That is one that whose rank equals that of the targeted monster you control plus the number of monsters banished by using it as material. So basically, you banish one or more dark monsters, you get a rank up. Pretty simple. Um, this one is most useful for going into, I think it's Dark Rebellion XZ. Dark Rebellion. Uh, yeah, you go into Dark Rebellion with your fours and then you rank it up into, I forget what other one it is. Uh, uh, hold on. Yeah, you go into Arc Rebellion XZ Dragon. Yeah, that's what it is. So you go Dark into Arc. Uh, and then Arc is able to negate monsters on the field and punch in for a whole bunch of damage. I'm not a big fan of this card in particular, mostly just due to the fact that uh, I'm not really playing a whole lot of Xyz. Uh, I don't think the Xyz are as strong. I think Link monsters are just more powerful. Although this card is very powerful and uh, yeah. But adding the brick, not necessarily very good. Uh, moving on, we have all of the adventure stuff. We're playing the adventure package. We're playing the DPE package. We're playing some generic hand traps, Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom is actually really good just due to the fact that it is level three. So definitely maps out on this one. Um, we have Maxi called by. Obviously, this is four master duel. So called by is at two. We have cross out. You can play this at three. 
that's totally fine. Uh, Nibiru as a crossout target. I am playing Imperm, even though it does conflict with Shade Brigadine, because it can't, like, banish itself from the grave, unlike a lot of these other ones. Um, however, I never actually had it come up where the Imperm was a problem for the Shade Brigadine, because oftentimes I wasn't going into the Shade Brigadine if my opponent was going first. So having that additional hand trap tended to be better. Um, yeah, that was mostly it. We have Forbidden Droplet as well. Uh, this is not only good as a crossout designator target, because uh, one of the few things that can actually break your boards is a Forbidden Droplet or something of the like, uh, but it's just good because you can send your own Phantom Knight cards to the graveyard in order to get their effects by banishing them uh, with, er, by banishing them from the grave, uh, and you can send them off of the droplets. The Effect Veiler as well as a crossout target. Uh, and then we can we also play things like Foolish Burial, Harpies, and Reinforcement of the Army. Definitely the Foolish Burial, definitely the Reinforcement of the Army, since all of our monsters are Warriors and lower than level 4, and they all have graveyard effects. Pretty standard. Uh, as for other engines that you can play, Emergency Teleport, because it special summons level 3 monsters, along with the Punk stuff, since they're all level 3s, or the Psychic Wielder slash Tracker package. Uh, I'm not too big of a fan of the Punk stuff, prior to them getting Deer Note. So when Deer Note comes out, whenever that may be, who knows, I would s highly suggest playing a 60 card version with the Punk stuff and, you know, making Hulk and all of that jazz. Um, but at the moment, I'm not really too big of a fan of the Punk stuff, just because it is a little bit more weak. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the list. Let's hop into the combos. Before we get on to the rest of the video, did you know that 70% of the people who watch my content aren't subscribed? If you end up liking the content, consider subscribing. You can always unsubscribe later if you end up not liking it. Anyway, let's get on to the rest of the video. All right, so here we are with the first combo. This is pretty simple. It's any Phantom Knight and a Silent Boot. So just normal your Phantom Knight. Now, if you want to get into the Adventure Engine as well off of the single Phantom Knight, do not activate the Normal Summon effect uh, or the monster that was normal summons effect. Uh, so for example, if you have Torn Scales, do not discard a card to send a card. Just leave it, okay? You can bring back the card to use it later. Uh, for now, just don't do that. Then we're going to special summon out the Silent Boots. Now, we will need a discard for this as well, so I'm just going to draw a card here. Um, but we will send both of these to the graveyard in order to go for our uh, Cherumini. Now, I didn't actually mention the extra deck because it's pretty much just the generic stuff mostly. Um, the important notable cards, I would say, are the Link Spider, the Almirage, and the Verte Anaconda, as well as the Breaksword and Rusty Bardiche. Um, everything else is pretty generic. Oh, Levier as well. Uh, so there's that. Sorry about that. Forgot to mention them. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely show them off, uh, all of them. Moving on, we have the Cherubini. Now, Cherubini has a very interesting effect where uh basically you can send a level three or lower monster uh from your deck to the graveyard then target a burning abyss monster on the field as cost now this is very important because that means if they imperm if they ash if they do actually they can't ash it they literally can't ash it because it sends for cost uh if they imperm if they affect veiler if they negate this in any way shape or form you are still going to send your card to the graveyard as long as this monster has been summoned, you're able to send the card. And that is the most important effect. It does gain attack, that doesn't matter. You you just want to send the card. So we're gonna activate the effect here and then we are going to send it to the graveyard. Uh, we are going to send, now, here we could send things like rag, Ragged Gloves. Uh, we could send, if we didn't have like the uh, Cloak in rotation, we could send Cloak. We could also send the Torn Scales, because they are all level 3. However, notably, there's another card that is level 3 that we can send to the graveyard. That is right, it is Water Enchantress. So what we're going to do is we're going to banish the Water Enchantress in order to add to our hand the Rite of Aram Seer. For some reason, this card is absolutely terrible and says it can also send uh, or ba banish itself from grave instead of just from hand. Anyway, we can now go for Rite of Aram Seer in order to grab ourselves a token. We can then use... Uh, the, or sorry, we can then set, activate, not set, uh, the Fateful Adventure to our field. 
Uh, now, depending on what else we have in hand, if we haven't used our normal or if we have another way to special summon something um, without forcing anything out, uh, we can use the Fateful Adventure here uh, in order to grab the Draco back to use as discard fodder for its own effect. In fact, I'll just show you that now uh, without the discard. Uh, so I'm actually going to put this back to the top of the deck. Of course, you can always just discard if you want to get the negate out in an earlier summon, because right now this would be summon five uh, for the... Here, I'll show you. Uh, if we use this effect now and we discard... Sorry, we don't discard. We search the griffin, which is in here somewhere. I'm bad at searching. Hello. There it is. Oh my gosh. Damn. And then we discard our card because it does have to discard. Uh, we can send whatever it is that we got to the grave. And then we can special summon out the Wandering Griffin Rider. Now this is on the fifth summon. So if they were to activate Nibiru, we would have the Omni Negate for that. But let's say you're like, okay, my opponent not playing Nibiru. Let's instead do it a little bit differently. Let's say this and this we don't have. Uh, instead, what we want to do is we can go for the banish of either cloak or boots either one works here um i'm gonna actually go for the boots here we're going to banish there it is and we are going to search for our shade brigadine shade brigadine is going to be added to the hand and then we can use it we set it and then we activate it yes you do have to set and activate you can't just activate it from hand it's not like that um but since we have no traps in graveyard we are able to do this so now this card will go to there we go we will do this. This will trigger the Fateful Adventure. Now, don't equip it to the token. Instead, what you want to do is you want to search out the Draco back and add it to hand so that we can discard for later. So we're going to add this card to hand. Then we are going to activate the Fateful Adventure. We are going to add the Griffin Rider to hand. We are going to pitch the Draco back to grave. And then the Draco back will then... Oh, not what I wanted. Sorry. Uh, and then the Draco back will go to the, uh, to our token and will equip itself to the token. So now these are equipped and then we can also special summon out our Wandering Griffin Rider right there. Now, again, this is one more summon. So that's five that they would be able to Nibiru, Nibiru before you get out at the Wandering Griffin Rider. So do keep that in mind as well. Um, however, again, we can just now go for the Cherubini play and the Shade Brigadine. So we're going to link these off into our Rusty Bardiche. Since they are both dark monsters, we can go into the Rusty here. Now Rusty, we can activate its effect. And uh, Rusty Bardiche says during your main phase, you can send a Phantom Knight's monster from deck to grave in order to set a Phantom Knight's spell or trap directly from deck. Also, if a Dark XZ is special summoned to a zone this card points to, while this monster is on the field, you can target a card on the field, destroy it. So, very nice. Uh, it's extra d destruction effect uh, if you special summon something, but more importantly, it is able to get that recursion into rotation. Uh, so at this point, we are going to send to the grave the torn scales to finally get that into rotation so that we can start bringing it back. And we are going to set to our field either the wings or the fog blade. Depending on what else your hand looks like, it depends on what you may want to set. Um, setting something like a fog blade may be a little bit more problematic if you're expecting them to have something like maybe a twin twister and you don't want them to know where you set the fog blade uh so there's that most of the time it doesn't really matter though so just set one or the other i normally like to grab the wings though just because having that additional protection is very nice uh so we will uh, no i wanted to set that thank you um anyway so now what we can do is we can banish the ancient cloak in order to add to our hands uh, now we've already special summoned silent boots, so we can't do that again, but we could grab ourselves, I don't know, ragged gloves. We could grab ourselves stained greaves. If we're playing that, we could do that. It's not too bad. Um, or we could add the wings. Let's add wings to our hand here. And with this, we can also special summon out our... Uh, our torn scales. 
Now, our Torn Scales isn't really going to be able to accomplish much here unless we were to link off something else. Um, however, what we could have also done is instead of sending the Torn Scales there, what we could have done is if we went back a few steps, uh, so we can go and put this to the top of the deck, we can put this to the top of the deck, and then we can put this guy back into the grave. So here with the Rusty Bardiche, instead of using our, uh, our Bardiche in order to send a... Torn scales, what we could do is we can actually send the ragged gloves to the graveyard. Right? And then we can still set this card. But now we can go and banish this guy. And we can send a uh I don't know, for example, a wings. Uh, we could send a fog blade, and then we could use that to revive the cloak and potentially do something with the cloak, depending on if we have another three or not. Um, but yeah, with just those two cards, as you can tell, it's not the greatest, but ending on the two traps, the negate, as well as the rusty bardiche is pretty nice, and you have really solid follow-up on the next turn. Um, so do keep that in mind. Yes, it's not the most interaction but just based on the fact that you can do that with literally just two cards uh you don't even need a discard technically uh yeah that's pretty decent meaning the rest of those cards can be in fact hand traps so yeah let's move on to the next one all right let's say you start with a single emergency teleport but you're smart and you're playing the punk engine now there are two things that you can do here with a single e telly what you can do is you can grab your ba -ba -ba, where is it um uh i only play one of it nope not madam spider where's the other one where's the in? there it is there it is uh okay so there are a few things that you can do here if you are playing the hulk dawn stuff uh, there are extra deck cards you're going to have to cut, but I you can always do Hulk Dawn stuff with your punk engine as well. Again, Phantom Knights are kind of more of an engine similar to Adventure or, I don't know, DPE, but, or punk or something like that, uh, just with more main deck requirements. Um, so yeah, you can obviously go into the Hulk stuff, or since they are level threes as well, you could potentially go into Cheru. Now... I'm going to act as if I don't have a discard here. So instead of using the effect paying 600 and searching for our uh, our Foxy Tune, which to be fair is very good in Phantom Knights because what you can do is you can have this card in your hand along with another Phantom Knight and then you can activate the Foxy Tune in order to special summon out the Madam Spider from deck. Uh, so like this, right? Send this card to the graveyard uh, and then after that resolves, you're also going to send this one to the graveyard in order to do special summon out your Madam Spider. And now all of a sudden you have a Phantom Knight in your graveyard to get that rolling as well. However, we're going to act as if we don't have that luxury available to us. We don't have a Phantom Knight in our hand that we really want to pitch. So instead, what we are going to do is um, off of the... Or say we don't have a normal summon we want to utilize as well. Uh, what we can do instead is... We can use the Z Amen in order to search the Madam Spider. Now, we can normal summon the Madam Spider, and there are varying lines here. You can either use the Madam Spider in order to, you know, activate the effect and search out your trap. Again, this is very dependent on your hand or what your opponent's board looks like, right? So if we activate this, we are locked out of using our Rite of Aramisir because we used the normal summon effect. However, we do get the guaranteed negation for, or the guaranteed uh, monster effect and negation with the Dangerous Gabu. However, I'm not as big of a fan of this as just waiting for the Rite of Aramisir. So what we are going to do is not declare that, not add ourselves the trap card, and we're going to send both of these to the graveyard because guess what? They are both level threes. That allows us to go into our Cherubini, which then again allows us to go for the... Uh, for the Enchantress, we can send this card to the graveyard, and then the Enchantress can do the adventure stuff. So, yes, this doesn't look like Phantom Knights in all honesty, but with the adventure engine online, 
it's still pretty good. And that was off of a singular emergency teleport. And then, of course, instead of that, you could also potentially go uh, for a Xiaomin into a, you know, a Madame Spider into a Halk, Halk of Fibrax. So there's that. Just another way of kind of doing things. All right, let's say that your hand has torn scales in it and you don't currently have access to a Cherubini, like you don't have access to a Silent Boots or another way to get another three onto the field and you don't have access to your adventure engine. Mo both of those don't exist. So what you can do is with the Torn Scales, you can use it and any discard uh, you send the discard to the graveyard, you use the effect of Torn Scales, send the card to the graveyard, and then you will send your Ancient Cloaks to the graveyard as well. Now with the Ancient Cloak, what you can do is banish it to search out Boots, and that allows you to special summon itself from hand. Then we can send both of these to the graveyard in order to get into Cherubini. Yes. A lot of these lines are very similar. It's a lot of just getting to Cherubini because this card gets the entire rest of the engine online. As a link to, it can get you to Bardish pretty easily. You just need one more material. As a way to just mill a card, it's also very useful. So yeah, all in all, very nice. However, here, as you could tell, we could go for the Water Enchantress and we could still get the Adventure Engine, but we can't use it this turn. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to send it to the graveyard our, uh, we could either send Ragged Gloves or we could send a, whatever it may be that we would want to send. Um, yeah, I mean, Ragged Gloves is just the best one here. Um, so yeah, we're just going to send that one. I guess technically we could also send Stained Greaves, but, uh, uh anyway. So now we are going to actually activate our effect of the... Ragged Gloves. Ragged Gloves is then going to send to the graveyard our... Uh, we could send Fogblade or Wings, or technically if you're playing it, Sword. You could also send Sword, uh, but I'm going to send the Fogblade. Uh, so we're going to send the Fogblade to the grave. That will proc our Torn Scales, which will Special Summon itself. Then we will banish the Fogblade in order to Special Summon our uh, Silent Boots. Then we can go and overlay these two into oh, sorry, sorry, sorry sorry hold on uh there we go uh into our levier then we can detach either of these materials and since they are detaching from the xz they don't get banished uh doesn't really matter which one uh, silent boots is probably better here uh, but now we can grab back our ancient cloak ancient cloak is the best one to have in rotation so bring back this guy and then we can send both of these cards to the graveyard since they are both dark in order to go into our rusty bardish uh so yeah we will special summon out the rusty bardish we can activate the effect of our bardish here in order to send two cards to the graveyard so let us send a uh yeah we will send we don't want to send that one let's send another cloak to the grave Yes, I know that there's already a cloak in there, but let's send another one. And then we can also send our, or sorry, set our fog blade. Uh, actually, let's set our shade brigadine. So we can set our shade brigadine here. And then we can use our shade brigadine in order to, you know, use it as extra link material. And then we can send... Uh, sorry, we have to send the Shade Brigadine to the grave for a Link Spider. This is why we're playing the Link Spider, uh, because our, the Shade Brigadine is a non-effect monster. So, uh, hold on. Let's bring this guy back. So, yeah, there you go. Also, you can go with the Link Spider into the... Uh, with the token of the Adventure Engine, you can go into the Link Spider to give you an effect monster, which can then be used to make, that's right, Verte Anaconda. Now, again, Verte is currently banned in the TCG, so don't do this, don't do this, you will get banned. Uh, but in Master Duel, it is currently not, which then can allow us to go into Verte. Now, before we want to do that, we want to make sure that we don't have anything else that we would want to special, right? So, for example, if we had anything else in our hand that we could use to special summon something like the punk engine or whatever it may be do keep that in mind uh, however we are going to banish the silent boots which we have not as of yet in order to grab ourselves the trap that we may need uh, here we are going to grab up the fog blade 
And then we can finally declare the Verte Anaconda in order to send the uh, Fusion Destiny, send the Dasher, and send the Celestial. There we go, in order to add the DPE to our field. And then we can set one and pass. So this is basically just the Fog Blade and the DPE as disruption on the opponent's turn. However, again, when we look at what we have in Grave, we have a Cloak, we have a uh, a Scales, we have Celestial, we also have the, uh, the Fog Blade when it goes to Grave, we have Bardish as additional follow-up if that sticks around. So it's not terrible, and this is where Phantom Knights really does shine, is that recursion, being able to constantly make these boards and make them pretty well. Sure, this board isn't great, but again, it was off of two cards and it was off of a pretty weak hand. So there you go. All right, let's say you drew a god hand. You drew access to your DPE, you drew your adventure engine, and you drew your Phantom Knight and the Silent Boots. What can you make off of this? Well, let's just get it started. First of all, we're going to start with the Rite of Aram Seer. We are going to grab ourselves the Fateful Adventure, obviously grabbing a token as well. And, uh, no, token grabbing the token as well. Uh, and then we can go and uh, normal summon out our Torn Scales, and then we can add off of the Fateful Adventure to our hand the Draco back. Draco back. There we go. Uh, and then we can use the effect here of our Fateful Adventure in order to grab up our this guy, Wandering Griffin Rider. Uh, we can then Special summon out the Wandering Griffin Rider, and uh, oh, this would have been discarded, uh, which would have then equipped itself to our token. So now we have the whole adventure engine online as well. Next up, we can special summon out our uh, Silent Boots, and we can link these guys off into our. He's here somewhere. Our Cherubini. Cherubini effect is going to be declared. We are going to then send to the graveyard our... Da -da -da, our Cloak. Uh, next up, I am going to banish our Silent Boots in order to add to our hand the... Shade... Nope. No, no, no. No, no, no. This goes to hand. Shade Brigadine. Then we can special summon out our Torn Scales. So... This is all stuff we've seen thus far. It's not going to change realistically uh, all that much, but it will change in a second. So first of all, we are going to set and activate our Shade Brigadine. We are going to special summon it. Um, special summon it. Move. There we go. Uh, and then we can link off these two into our... Ba -ba -ba, this guy. Uh, then we can activate its effect in order to send the ragged gloves. Gotta send the ragged gloves here. And we can set uh, the fog blade. Okay, so we will set that. And then we will banish our ragged gloves in order to send another fog blade um nope uh, well yeah uh, and then we're going to immediately banish it in order to special summon out our ancient cloak then we are going to overlay these two into that's right our levier so this is all stuff that we've seen just kind of putting it all together we're then going to detach our ancient cloak it doesn't matter which one we detach actually um but then we can bring back our silent boots uh, and then we can link these off uh, into our IP Mascarena. So we're going to special summon out our IP Mascarena. Yay. Uh, cool. And then we can, we now have the IP Mascarena, which could go into an Apollosa. Kind of. Uh, Apollosa is pretty difficult to actually make in this deck. Uh, this is one of the most cuttable cards just because it does not allow you to use tokens um however do keep in mind that you can also banish your fog blade as well as your um well let's do this 
we can banish the silent boots to grab our wings so we can banish the fog blade as well as our wings in order to grab up the materials in order to make an appalosa if we so chose uh, or if we had the ability to do that um, but alas we don't really uh, so it's still worth it to like go wings you can go wings and then we can bring back one of our monsters by banishing the wings from the graveyard i think right uh yeah uh so we can activate wings target one of our monsters give it a boost give it some protection uh banish it from grave special summon back either the torn scales or the ancient cloak probably the torn scales that's more uh that's just kind of better to have banished and then we can use that as material for our ip mascarena now this is all before we've even activated our fusion destiny so we can also get fusion destiny onto the field and yeah there's that and i know what you're saying well why can't you go into apo with your rusty bardiche it's there why not use it? Well, the problem is that this card cannot be used as a link material. And since IP Mascarina specifically link summons a link monster, you can't do that. Uh, so, yes, while I would love to use Rusty Bardiche here, you can't. Um, however, with that being said, you could also go into your Nightmare Unicorn. So if you didn't want to use multiple materials to make your Appalosa, you can go into Nightmare Unicorn, pitch a card like this Effect Veiler that isn't doing anything, just shuffle away a card your opponent controls. Pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, uh, well, obviously we'd also activate this and we would grab ourselves the DPE. Uh, so yeah, all in all, this is probably the best board that you can put up. There are a few changes, like, for example, if you want to go instead of into the Rusty Bardiche, you could potentially try and go for the Appalosa, but then if you do that, your uh, Torn Scales would be banished, as well as I don't think you would have the IP Mascarena. You could still have the Appalosa with uh, three negates, but you wouldn't have the Fog Blade, you wouldn't have the IP, and uh, that's it. That That's the only difference. Oh, you wouldn't have the Rusty. Um... So it's a trade-off as to what you value. Uh, again, if you're going into games like two or three and you know what your opponent's playing, sure, you could tailor your board to more of that. However, I do prefer having a little bit more of the, I, you, you know, having the IP mask right now just so that I can shuffle away a card if it ends up being something like, oh, my opponent is playing a whole bunch of back row. Maybe I want to deal with the back row uh, or what have you. So there you go. That's probably the best end board you can make in this deck. Now, this is obviously not with the Halk Dawn stuff, which is obviously going to be better just because there are so many tools available for that. Um, but yeah, this is the best Phantomite board that you can make. All right, so real quick, I wanted to just discuss uh, what the Break Sword in particular was used for, and uh, I'll show you. Most of the time, what I like to use it for is we go uh, Torn Scales, we special out the Silent Boots. Again, any Phantom Knight and Silent Boots also does this. Um, but basically, as long as you can get to two level threes, you can go into your... Sorry, hold on. Let's overlay these. Uh, we can go into our Break Sword. Now, with Break Sword, you can activate the pop effect if you want to go into a rank four or just get those materials back. Because what you can do is you can detach... A material, target this card, target another card your opponent controls, destroy them, and then bring back these two Phantom Knight materials from the grave. Or just if you have two Phantom Knights in your grave, uh, you can bring those back if you didn't end up using two Phantom Knights for this. Or what you could do is you could just proceed to battle, uh, attack with this card, and then slap uh, this one and this one, and now you have a Zeus. That's difficult to deal with uh, and basically cleans up the board before really committing to anything. And since you can also just detach these two guys, uh, you also have that now working for you. So there you go. You can also make Zeus going second. Um, other such plays to look for when going second, uh, using the adventure engine to bait out negates is also very nice because a lot of those cards are basically must negates. Um, such as the the Fateful Adventurer, the Dracoback, the Ride of Aramisir, uh, lots of stuff like that. So those are things to keep in mind. Uh, also, also, if we want to talk about more of the uses of Breaksword, if you are able to bring back your Rusty Bardiche, um, sorry, uh, let's add this guy to hand. 
and this guy in hand. Let's say you have your Rusty Bardiche already on the field, whether you brought that back from the graveyard thanks to one of your traps, or you just link summoned it or what have you. Um, you can do a similar thing. You can normal summon this guy and special summon out this guy. Now you could also have special first, but it doesn't really matter. We can then go into our... Yep. Yep. Uh, sorry, hold on. Let me move this guy over here. We can go into our break sword over here next to the rusty bardiche because now it is pointing to the... Or sorry, the rusty is pointing to the break sword. That will allow the Rusty Bardiche to proc its second effect to target a card and destroy it. And then we can also use this effect as well. We can send this card to the graveyard in order to destroy another card. Um, so, yeah, there you go. There's there's two destructions there. Um, and then this card will go to the graveyard. And we can bring back these two as additional material. Uh, now, these can be used to Link Summon or they can be used to XZ summon, depending on if you're playing the fours or not. So there you go. All right, so this next play is only doable with the Ragged Gloves or the Ancient Cloak. Let's say your hand is absolutely tragic and you just, you basically have like a whole bunch of hand traps and like one Phantom Knight. That's okay. Uh, this is why we play the Almirage. You normal summon out either of these two. The reason it has to be these two is because well, I'll show you in a second. We send the Ancient Cloak to the graveyard, and then we can special summon out our Almirage. Um, I guess technically you could also do this with uh, Silent Boots as well. Um, so there's that. Banish the Ancient Cloak from the grave in order to add to the hand uh, our Shade Brigadine. I, I forgot that. Boots literally add spell. Uh, yeah, but there's that. Uh, then we can go and activate our Shade Brigadine. We can special summon out our monster. Oh, gosh dang it. <laughs> Draw him to there. And then to there. There we go. And then we can link this guy away in order to go into our Link Spider. And then we can link both of these guys away into our Verte. Boom, one card Verte Anaconda. Yeah, it's not the greatest, but you know, it works. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, if you don't have access to your DPE, this is very nice. If you do have access to your DPE, you could potentially add additional follow-up off of the Ancient Cloak uh, or the Silent Boots or your Ragged Gloves or what have you. Um, so yeah, there are definitely other options as well, but again, this isn't the greatest play. It's still nice to have though. Uh, it's nice to just have access to your, uh, your Verte and just like be able to potentially put a card into the graveyard that you may need for later, right? For example, you could also just, uh, you know, if you have another discard, uh, available to you like for example maybe you have a foolish burial so you can send another monster to the graveyard um, you can do this as well in order to get your monster into the grave so almirage isn't just useful for that but that's what it's mostly useful for because uh, yeah off of this foolish burial you could send the uh, uh the torn scales which could then bring itself back and then you could go into your rusty bardiche off of that uh you know instead of making your predator plant 13 anaconda you make your, um, oh, you can't actually do that. Uh, no, I guess you'd still have to make the Verte, but you could, you could make the Rusty off of this. Um, so yeah, there's that. All right. And now I just want to do some real quick test hands. Now, obviously this deck is not perfect. In fact, it's pretty mediocre, uh, but I still want to do some test hands to kind of show you some of the lines that you can take. Obviously we draw, we drew a cross out designator. So most of our plays will be insulated and we drew half of our adventure engine as well. So we're going to obviously start with the adventure engine in order to add the right of Aram Seer. I'm just going to immediately send that to the grave in order to grab ourselves the, ba -ba -ba, this card to the spell and trap card zone, grab the token. Uh, then we can also just, since we have this in hand, special summon it, and then we get to go and activate the effect of our card in order to add to the hand the Draco back, which exists. I 
I swear, there it is. I'm literally hoving over it. And now we have an E. Telly and, er, uh, and Foolish Burial. So we're going to go for the Foolish. Since we don't need the Adventure Engine, let's go for our uh, Phantom Knight's Engine. Uh, so we're going to send Cloak here. Send Cloak to Grave. Cloak is then going to be banished. Uh, sorry, this can go to Grave. In order to add to our hand... Um, hmm. We haven't normaled, uh, but we do have our normal monsters effects turned off. So what we are going to do is we are going to add to our hand the Torn Scales. And then we are going to actually go for the Emergency <sighs> Teleport here in order to grab up our... Uh, I'm going to say that we're not playing the punk stuff, so we're going to special summon out the Psychic Tracker or the Psychic Wielder, either one works we're going to normal summon our out our torn scales we are going to send this card to the graveyard as well as this one and then we are going to go for our cheru cherubini's effect is going to activate uh, or we're going to activate the effect and we are going to send to the graveyard our silent boots uh now i could also send the ragged gloves depending on what i wanted to grab here uh actually let's make sure that we want to do that so right now we only have the phantom knights of torn scales and we've already utilized our um our ancient cloak so at this point it is more worth it i would say to just go for the silent boots so that we can get the torn scales into rotation as well as getting uh, our shade brigadine uh so yeah we are going to actually no i lied uh no it's better to actually go for the ragged gloves here i yes I always record these late at night and I really shouldn't because, you know, you've really got to think. Uh, yeah. The reason we can do this is we want to go for this, which will then proc our Torn Scales. And then we can send our... No, no, no. I was right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Not the Ragged Gloves. Sorry. I I was I was 100% correct. Yeah. We want to banish this guy. Send Sorry. Send that guy. Banish that guy. Then activate its or then search to our hand the shade breathing. Yes. Sorry, I saw a different line. I don't know how I saw it, but I did. Anyway, uh, we can then activate this guy's effect and special summon him. Oh gosh, dang it. Oh, why is this so difficult? There we go. <clears throat> cool. And now we can go for our. <sighs> okay, here's where the choices can be made. So we can go for Rusty here. Or we could go for an Appalosa. And yeah. And because our Torn Scales is going to get banished, that's not the greatest. Hmm... Trying to think if there's a way to get another material on our side of the field, and I'm not really seeing it here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, there's a reason. Yeah, there's a reason we kept this Draco back. Sorry. I knew that there was a reason that we had this. Uh, we can actually activate the effect of our Torn Scales. This was the line that I was seeing earlier with the Ragged Gloves. Uh, okay, so, here's the line. I'm very sorry about this. We send the card to the graveyard, uh, which is just going to equip it to this. Um, so we'll send the card to the graveyard in order to add, sorry, not add, send. We can send another card to the graveyard. Uh, so I could have sent the Ragged Gloves here uh, because we would have been able to activate this effect. So let's say we actually did send the Ragged Gloves. So we're going to say... So I could have also done this basically in the reverse order uh, where the Ragged Gloves is... Hold on, let's put this to the top of the deck. Uh, and we'll put this in the grave. Uh, so we would have used instead the Ragged Gloves. Hopefully this is making sense. The Ragged Gloves would then proc the Torn Scales to special summon itself. The Torn Scales would then discard, would send the Silent Boots. Make sense? Um, 
Oh, sorry. Ragged Gloves would then allow us to send the... Uh, oh, no, 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 I didn't. What? What? How? What? That was not what I clicked. You saw me click the, the fog blade. Okay, it's fine. Uh, yeah. So we'd get two sends here. We'd send a fog blade and we'd send the silent boots off of our ragged gloves and our torn scales. Makes sense? Still following me? Hopefully. Probably not. I'm very confusing. Uh, anyway, now we get to banish the fog blade in order to special summon out the silent boots. And now we can overlay these guys. This is what I was trying to do. We can overlay these guys into our levier. <clears throat> levier can then detach. Uh, let's detach. Make sure that you detach the silent boots in order to special summon back our cloak. Fantastic. Literally a play I've already made. Now we can go into our rusty. Rusty effect can activate. We can mill. Uh, what do I want to mill? The silent boots, sure. In order to set the fog blade. Set. And then we can go and banish our boots in order to add the... Ba -ba. Where is he? There he is. The Shade Brigadine. We can set the shade. We can activate the shade. We can special the shade. We can send this guy to the graveyard in order to special summon out our Link Spider. Then we can send send in order to special summon out our uh, Verite Anaconda. I value Verite Anaconda more obviously here, given the fact that we don't have anything to revive in our grave, uh, nor really access to a way to do that. Um... So yeah, having like IP Mask Arena here isn't really great. Um, sorry. And then we can just declare the effect. Sending the DPE and materials. So send, send, or sorry, the materials and the fusion spell. Uh, and send in order to special summon out our DPE. So there you go. It's a very similar board to even the best of hands, but we did have a fairly decent hand. The only thing we were missing was that access to our DPE with the Fusion Destiny. So all in all, very solid. And uh, one thing I do want to note with Verte Anaconda, that's pretty interesting. So let's say our Rusty Bardiche is actually still in deck. And uh, yeah, let's say we have the Adventure Engine. Uh, so we're going to put this to our deck. What you can actually do is use the Verte Anaconda uh, and its first effect to target a face of monster on the field and change it to dark until the end of the turn. Uh, so what we can do is, let's say we no longer had our Griffin Rider as well. Say we just had this token. What we can do is we can activate its effect, targeting our token in order to make it a dark. Since the token is normally earth, this will now allow us to use both this monster as well as our Verte in order to go into our link three of Rusty Bardish, since it does require the dark monsters. So Verte Anaconda is very worthwhile to go into in most situations. Even just keeping it around sometimes is enough to win you the game just because you can go into that Rusty Bardish once again. So there you go. All right, so that's pretty much it for what you need to know for this new version of Phantom Knights. Now, I didn't go over the tour guide of the Underworld combo with the Seer and Graph, and the reason for that is one, because you don't really need to play this these cards anymore. In fact, you probably don't want to play them anymore. Uh, but two, and more importantly, is the fact that most people probably already know it, uh, who do play the tour guide version. The reason we don't play tour guide is because it conflicts with the water enchantress. Sure, Phantom Knights of Torn Scales kind of conflicts, but you can normally, or you can special summon it back in order to get its effect as well. Uh, so even normal summoning it isn't terrible. Uh, or like, yeah. Uh, whereas to tour guide, it only has a normal summon effect. So it's not really worth it to play it with the adventure stuff. Uh, and adventure is just better. 
But with the tour guide stuff, I'm going to go over it real quick. Basically, you normal the tour guide, you special summon out the seer. Seer uh, has its effects negated, so there's that. But then you link it off for your Cherubini. Then the seer effect will activate. Um, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Other way around. You summon out the graph. Graph summons from deck. Yes, sorry. You go tour guide, normal summon, special summon graph. Link off into your Cherubini, then you go into the Seer off of the Graph, and then you can go into a Rusty Bardi. So it's a one card Rusty, um, however, the problem with this is that it locks you out of the Adventure Engine. So that's why it's not really played as much. Um, sure, you still get the send off the Cherubini as well, so you can send something like your uh, Cloak, your Scale, your Silent Boots, whatever it may be. Um, and then you also get your Rusty Bardish. So it's very nice. Uh, if you want to take out the adventure stuff and play that instead, sure. Uh, I don't think it's as useful, though. So that's why I didn't really talk about it. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy. If you did, a like is very much so appreciated. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye.